Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> As uh, has been discussed at this hearing, and I apologize for arriving late, you know how it is multiple votes in multiple committees. Uh, it's clear that the current law governing recusal gives judges and justices a lot of discretion when making recusal decisions. And there have been numerous instances of judges abusing this discretion from district court and circuit court judges failing to recuse themselves from cases in which they have a financial interest to uh, Justice Thomas failing to recuse himself from cases concerning January 6th, despite his wife's uh, documented engagement with the organizers of the insurrection. So the legislation we're discussing today would begin to fill those gaps by laying out specific instances in which a judge or justice must recuse themselves, including instances where a party has given a gift or made a financial contribution to a campaign supporting a justice's confirmation. Uh, Mr. Sherman, I'll ask you, why are these specific recusal provisions necessary and are there any other specific provisions that Congress should consider? Well, I think they're necessary because as the last several years have demonstrated, um, you know, again, activists and advocates who want to influence the court will exploit every loophole possible, which is quite easy when there is no binding code of conduct for the Supreme Court to abide by. Um, I think uh, the CERT Act would address a lot of these concerns by not only providing transparency, additional transparency with respect to the justices uh, uh, financial entanglements and creating a duty to know across the federal judiciary, but it would also provide transparency with respect to amici who are seeking to influence the court, and then ultimately, as you said, provide an independent and transparent process to adjudicate recusals, which I think is where the public has really uh, grown frustrated and quite concerned about justices and judges ruling on cases uh, in where, which they have a financial interest or a conflict of interest or, or other conflict of interest. Thank you. And uh, you know, there's uh, certainly skeptics out there who have expressed concern that the more stringent judicial recusal requirements that we seek to put in place, along with public explanations for recusal decisions, would actually invite gamesmanship at the Supreme Court because there's only nine justices. Again, the legislation we're talking about would reduce, I believe, would reduce opportunities for such gamesmanship by providing clear-cut guidelines for when a conflict of interest requires recusal, taking the guesswork out of the process. Now, federal judges want to hold themselves to a high ethical standard. They claim that they hold themselves to a high ethical standard. Our legislation would make it easier for them to do that and for the public to uh, see that. Question for Professor Sample. Can you explain how clear guidelines for when recusal is called for would lead to greater consistency and transparency in recusal decisions? Yes, Senator. I think most prominently eliminating the judge as judge in his or her own case is an important preliminary step. And at the Supreme Court level, while Yes, in theory, there is a gamesmanship concern. I think it's worth noting that the justices regularly decide cases on issues of major national import all the time, and they often disagree vehemently and still maintain a, a good working relationship. So I don't think that uh, the individual justices out there would be looking to game the system by recusing uh, their fellow justices or voting unless those, those recusals were truly warranted. And I think if they are truly warranted, then the, the, the entire nation is served by those recusals. We've had situations, I mean, we went over a year with only eight justices on the bench because Congress refused to give Merrick Garland a hearing. The court managed to function with only eight justices for more than a year. I think they can manage to function with only eight justices in one particular case. Excellent point. And I'm glad that uh, in the reporting from this hearing, it will be, that quote will be attributed to you and uh, not a member of the committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> 